In your squares, please turn and face the chair. Our job today is to decode our secret message. So before we work on our secret message, we're gonna do a quick practice with our star words. So shake out your hands. We're only doing our moves this way. It'll jog our memory if there's any words in the message that we know, okay? Ready? Here. SMP1, making sense of the problem, is a perfect standard, you know, for the secret message with the literacy concept because they have to take those words and they have to figure out what is the big question, um, what are my parts, what information do I have, and then from there they're able to solve it. So in building that comprehension skill from the literacy, then they're also using it for their problem solving skills in math. All right. Take a minute to look at our message. Focus in on the words. Look for a word you know. Don't shout out. Remember, I'm going to be zigzagging, so you don't need to put your arms up. Ezra, do you see a word that you know? We. We. How do you spell we? W-E. Awesome. W-E. And there it is right there. So I'm going to give that to Ezra. Jason G, do you see a word that you know? Four. Four. The numeral four. How do we make a four? Down and over and down some more. Nice job, Jason G. All right, Brianna, do you see a word that you know? Green. Green. How do you spell green? G-R-E-E-N. Can we sing it? G-R-E-E-N, G-R-E-E-N. I had the word in green so that some of my children who don't have any word knowledge would be able to have a word. Abel, do you see a word that you know? And. And, how do you spell it? A-N-D. In TK, we have 15 sight words, and so I make a point of using those words when I develop my word problem or secret message, and then um, that allows the kids that are reading and know those words to help decode and make sense of the problem. All right, TK friends, do we have any words left? No. No, no so we don't have to we read around. Read all by ourselves. We could read it all by ourselves, but first I'm going to read it to you just to make sure I know what it says, then we can read it together. While I'm reading it out loud, I'd like your eyes on it, reading with me, but you're quiet readers. We have four... So with the secret message and with emerging readers, they're using clues. So there are some guesses, but they're using their literacy skills to match the letters to the sounds or the picture cues, like the word green was in green, um, so that everyone can be successful. So what is the question asking us? I want you to think about it. What is the question asking? Can you say that a little louder, Skylar? How many shamrocks there are? How many shamrocks there are? How many shamrocks do we have? That's on the number two. Okay. Well, let's let's go through this. Let's think about the process. We're going to think about what we need to do first. How can we solve this? What can we do? Draw shamrock. Draw shamrocks, and then Viviana said. Put four. Make four big ones. Okay, so we're going to draw. SMP5 is using appropriate tools, and that is a perfect, you know, SMP also to be found in the secret message because we use lots of manipulatives, but when we're out in the real world or when we're, you know, at home, the kids don't have all of the tools that we have in the classroom. They don't have 10 frames. They don't have manipulatives, but they can always draw. And when you're taking a test and you have a piece of paper, drawing is, you know, probably the easiest one next to fingers, depending on, you know, how large the problem is. And so with the secret message, we practice using that tool of drawing the picture, taking the information from the story and representing it with an illustration. Right, let's check them. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. So I have four big now, my next step is going to be two little shamrocks, okay? TK friends, please put your eyes up here. I want you thinking like a mathematician. Our first part is the four big shamrocks. Our second part, the two little shamrocks. 
Do we need to draw anything else? Yes or no? No. It makes six. It makes six. You say? Okay. Well, let's check it. Let's count all of them together. One. They love two, it. They're like so, they're so into math. Um, they're so excited by the, the fact that they understand and they can tell you what to do. And they truly do know what to do. And, um, and that comes from, you know, considering the SMPs when planning the lessons. Alex, what is the next part? Not that, well, not, we're not doing our symbols yet. We're doing our part. Two. And what does the two mean? Like it's two what? Two little shamrocks. Alex, will you come give us a two? All right, everybody, how do we make a two? Curve around and slide to the right. All right, so we have our four for our four big shamrocks. We have our two for our two little shamrocks. Now we need our hole. Our hole was six. So now our numbers match our picture. We have a four for the four big, two. I think this age is the perfect age to get kids to start thinking like mathematicians. They're so excited about everything. They're little sponges. Um, if we can develop and instill in them the skills to think for themselves and to understand the importance of numbers, understand what it means when they're working with numbers, um, and really take ownership for what they're doing and why they're doing it. If we can build that confidence now, I think when they're older, they'll, they'll be mathematicians. Can we turn that into words? No? I think we can. I think we could. What would we say? Four and two is the same as... All right. Ooh, and our sixth grade friends are here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the lines for that. And when we finish math groups, we'll come back to it. But let's say that again together so I can get my lines up. So when the sixth grade friends came in, we stopped our activity. Um, that's really important in transitional kindergarten to move you know, from one activity to another within a certain amount of time, whether or not you have completed it because of their attention span. And TK kids' attention span lasts, you know, 10 to 15 minutes max. Nine, 100. All right, let's finish up our sentence. We were going to put our number sentence into words. First, we read our story. We figured out our problem. We drew our picture. We solved our problem. We put it into a number sentence, and now we want to tell everyone. And we want to tell them that four and two is the same as six. Everybody say it with me. Four and two is the same as six. So I need to start off with Hetsy. I think it was where I left off, right? Because Alani, did you do our equal sign in oh, yeah. my zigzagging? Okay. So we're going to start off with the word for. Where? F-O-F-I-V-E. F-O-F-I-V-E. Does F-I-V-E spell for? Viviana, will you grab the pointer for us and find for for us? Because we've got a discrepancy. We've got two words up there that start with the f f with the f sound but we're looking for four right there. so which one is it what are the letters we need in the middle of the lesson when we were transferring the numeral into a number word um, Evan made a good you know guess we would say for spelling the numeral four and he spelled five and um, I thought that that would be the appropriate time to find our information, you know, make sure that we were correct, you know, attend to precision, one of the SMPs. So it was a perfect time for Viviana to come on up, find the actual word for us and point it, and then we would be able to use other tools in our classroom to help us. Please make sure your eyes are this way, and let's read our sentence together. Four and two is the same 